वेलकम बैक गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड वी आर बैक विथ एस एस सी सी जी एल टी ओ वन क्वेश्चन पेपर दैट वी दैट यू गाइज गॉट लास्ट वीक आई सपोज सो वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग ऑल द क्वेश्चन गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन गुड आफ्टरनून कॉस्तव आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर देर यू हैव यू लंच एंड यू आर नॉट स्लीपी ओके सो uh let's quickly get this done with um the questions in ssc cgl are not the tough questions it's just that you have to be very good with your vocabulary and also your idioms okay a uh, little bit of your error spotting also has to be you have to be thorough with it okay so you have to you need a lot of practice you got to practice practice and practice all right so let's get started guys let's get started had your lunch miss yes i did i did have my lunch thank you shankara rao all right let's get started guys so what do we have here first the question type that we have is uh you have been given underline as in something that is in bold uh you have been given options and you have to if there is no improvement required you have to check the fourth option otherwise you have to change it according to the things required okay so it's mainly to do with tenses i hope all of you are clear with your tenses so let's start since we were knowing the correct route uh we did not worry at all okay since we were knowing the correct route what uh the sentence is talking about since we did okay so it is talking in past okay so simple past it is talking in simple past since we so instead of since we were knowing that is past continuous we should use since we knew the correct route uh, should be the answer Yes, most of you got it right. Very good, very good, very good, 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 good. All right. Moving on to the next question. It is an ancient historic place, and it also it once belongs to the Pandavas. It is an ancient, which you understand, it is talking about something that was ancient and historic place, and it once. that means sometime in the past it belonged ed belong not belongs which is in present to the pandavas okay so the answer will be again one all right moving on to the next question this was also pretty simple moving on to the next one have you ever saw whenever we say have you ever which word do we use which form of uh, see do we use have you ever seen okay have you ever seen should be the question if you are putting it in an interrogative form it should always be have you ever seen not saw okay seen option 3 my bad yes seen have you ever seen yes v3 right satish all right moving on to the next question since these are very easy and self explanatory no need to explain a lot over here moving on to the next one no one enjoys to deceive his family no one enjoys enjoys okay so it's something that we, is ongoing so deceiving his family so continuously or repeatedly deceiving his family no one enjoys deceiving his family this is a gerund here we are talking about gerund uh, kostav you were asking examples of gerund uh, here we go this is the best example of gerund so no one enjoys deceiving his family so deceiving is not talking about uh, the continuous form it is talking about the gerund okay so no one enjoys deceiving his family should be the right answer okay uh another example could be no one loves painting bins okay so no one loves painting bins as in the gerund form of painting 
paint all right moving on to the next question there is no chance of success unless you do not work hard okay there's no chance of success unless you do not work hard is there an uh, is there any improvement required yes there is an, an improvement required there is no chance of success unless you do not work hard now whenever we use the word unless we have to give an affirmative oh my god three f's you have to unless is always accompanied with an affirmative phrase okay so followed by affirmative phrases okay so in uh, unless you work hard should be the right on this answer unless you work hard yes so option 1 is the right answer yes you do not use two negatives together in a statement all right moving on to the next one any doubt i assume none okay moving on to the next one okay so now what do we have we have idioms or one word substitution sorry not idioms one word substitution so you have been given a statement you have to find out what is the one word for it okay so let's see first one a funny imitation of a poem okay what is counterfeit counterfeit the meaning of counterfeit is a fraudulent imitation okay like uh, making something fake okay so uh, or forge something so synonyms can be fake or forge all these words are synonyms of uh, fraudulent okay next uh, the the other word that we have is son so definitely counterfeit is not the right answer the next one that we have is sonnet i'm sure all of you know what is a sonnet sonnet is a poem with which consists of 14 lines or so so uh, sonnet is also not the right answer caricature what is a caricature caricature you must have seen uh, caricatures of uh, people they usually what they do is they highlight one of the features as a prominent feature to add a little humor to it okay so caricature is also not talking about a poem okay on the other hand parody okay it can be a picture description or any of it uh where certain striking characteristics are exaggerated for what exaggerated in order to create comic effect all right that is the meaning of a caricature okay Sheetal is saying no sound. All of you, I'm sure all of you are able to hear me, aren't you? Are you guys able to hear me? Okay, Sony, I'm I'm not sure how you guys pronounce the word p uh, p o e m, but it's what I have been taught is poem. It is not poem. Okay, so. that's why i keep saying poem all right anyways okay no problem in the sound right sheetal is there a problem sheetal or who was it sheetal yes yeah, sheetal uh, can you hear me sheetal uh, then there is a problem from your side sheetal everybody else can hear me they are saying all right so okay 
Now finally, the final word that we have is a parody and parody, I'm sure all of you know this word parody, it's a comical, again comical effect uh, uh, of, it can be a comical effect or an exaggeration of a poem or it can be of an artist, it can be of any of it, okay? Alright, so the most closest of funny imitation of poem is option 4, a parody. What is a parody? An imitation of style. Of a particular writer, artist, with deliberate exaggeration. Again, it's the same. Exaggeration, exaggeration. exaggeration to add the comical effect to it okay so, uh, that's why they exaggerate his counterfeit behavior always put him in trouble yes yes that is the right usage of Shubham very nice statement all right moving on to the next one so an imi a funny imitation of a poem should be a parody all right moving on to the next one word substitution Decision made upon a political question by the votes of all qualified person. Now, look at all these words. All these words are related to politics. Okay, uh, they are some or the other way related to politics. So let's look at each one of it one. Okay, so first one veto is a constitutional right. Right to what? To reject a decision. It can be a decision or a proposal made by the lawmaking body. Alright, so it is a right given to people to uh, excuse themselves from the uh, decisions that are made by the lawmaking body or it can be based on a company it can be uh, a veto power is given to in given in many cases in a company it can be given in uh, uh, cons in the parliament it can also be given to uh, politicians it can be given you must have seen reality shows as well they have this veto power okay so that is veto uh, the next word suffrage is the right to vote okay so it basically means the right to vote okay in political elections so um, so I can probably say uh, something like this uh, the suffrage is only for 18 and above okay so that means the right to vote is only for people who are 18 years and above all right moving on to the next word Plebiscite. The meaning of the word plebiscite is again authorization granted Okay, sorry. That is the meaning of franchise, not pleb plebiscite. Uh, the direct vote. This also basically means voting, okay. Uh, so of all the members of an electorate on an important it can be question it can be important decision public question or decision okay so basically a vote it can be uh, also plebiscite as well as suffrage both are related to voting okay 
Now, next one, last one. Franchise. Franchise, like I said, is authorization granted. Enabling the person who has the authorization granted to carry out specified remember this word it is not for everything specified uh, commercial activities okay so usually a lot of companies have a franchise like uh, uh, McDonald's has this franchise um, KFC has a lot of franchise so people who buy these franchise they have specified uh, commercial activities that they are supposed to perform and only those activities okay they cannot perform anything else and the authorization is granted directly from the company itself okay so it is there in companies as well as in the the permanent member of the UN have veto power yes you are right you are right Shuma Alright, so the right answer, what do you think? What should be the right answer? Out of all the words that we have discussed, the right answer should be plebiscite. Decision made upon a political question by the votes of all qualified persons. So the direct vote of all the members of electorate on an important public question. Okay, is the right answer so plebiscite is the right answer remember this word all right moving on to the next question one who totally abstains from alcoholic drinks i think we have discussed this many a times and this question has been one of the most favorite question out of all the questions that are asked in one word substitution i'm sure all of you know this uh, a person who abstains from alcoholic drinks is a teetotaler, alright? So someone who has never touched even a drop of alcohol is a teetotaler. I don't know how many of you are uh, that. Yes, franchise is a sort of a branch uh, where, yes it is a branch, okay? The main head of the company gives certain specified instructions or regulations that is uh, supposed to be carried out by those franchise yes yes teetotaler is the one that is most repeated you're right sober okay so, yes sober all right uh, let's look at the other options just uh, to be clear what does the other words mean so that you don't never get confused what is a puritan now Puritan is a not very important word but since it is mentioned so let's just look at what it means okay Puritan means a uh, it is a member of group of English Protestants Okay, not very important. They, they are of the late 16th and 17th century. Something like that, okay? Next word. Kostav, you are asking the meaning of plebiscite. I just discussed the meaning of plebiscite. I've written it as well the meaning of pleb plebiscite and just going one slide back so that you can uh, uh, just gauge the meaning of the word once again the direct vote of all the members of an electorate on an important public question if you want an example it can be such as change in the constitution all right that is the meaning of plebiscite cost of. i hope you got it all right 
what is the meaning of Samaritan? Uh, usually you will hear this in a lot of TV series. Uh, it is It has a biblical reference and it is used in a lot of TV series. They talk about uh, the good old Samaritan or a good Samaritan and things like that. What is the meaning of the word Samaritan? Someone who is very helpful and charitable. Okay. A charitable or helpful person not tourist no Satish the meaning of Samaritan is not tourist okay it means just a person who is very helpful and is very charitable good Samaritan yes and it has a biblical reference so it has it has been it has been mentioned in the Bible and from there it has the word has come to light all right uh, what is the meaning of pedant Pedant means a very important word, okay? Uh, it doesn't look that important, but it is. Uh, you can see a lot of example of these. this word. A person who is excessively concerned with minor details. Okay, someone who keeps looking at every single details and everything has to be perfect and um, all the rules have to be followed. Or with displaying academic learning. So a person who is excessively concerned with minor details and rules or with displaying academic learning, you must have uh, seen pedants in your school a lot, okay? These people exist in all schools and all colleges who are just concerned only about rules and regulations and every single detail has to be right and uh, about their academic scores, they are always concerned about things like that, okay? So those are called pedants, all right? Or pedant. Okay, so the right answer, as you know, is teetotaler. Moving on to the next one. A person who maliciously destroys by fire. Okay, so someone who uses fire to destroy things. Okay, so what is the meaning of antagonist? Antagonist, I am sure all of you know what is an antagonist. But just to be clear, is a person who actively opposes it is the opposite of protagonist okay so someone who is uh, the villain of the story opposes or is hostile to someone or something Okay, so basically an adversary. Okay, an adversary. You can give opponents, uh, you can talk about opponents like enemy, Protagonist and antagonist. Yes, uh, enemy. You can also call him opponent. So these are the synonyms of antagonist. Okay, I'm sure you have heard this word as well a lot. Okay, uh, protagonist is someone who's the hero of the story, plays the good part of the story, is someone who is all goody goody in nature, hero and villain. Yes. Okay, Sheetal, up sound clear. Thank you. Okay. Uh, up clear tab se clear nahi tha India okay Satish let's not get into India and Pakistan something that I do not like talking about at all someone who talks about India and Pakistan 
you need to understand that we are not just talking when we say india and when we say pakistan we refer to all pakistanis and all indians how can we generalize that they are all villains and we are all good people do you think all indians are good people uh of course uh, i'm not saying that all pakistani are good people uh, i'm just saying that it is something we are talking about people and people can be good or bad okay so it's not it is not restricted to an area or it is not restricted to a certain type of people or something like that it is just something that you cannot just generalize okay people are well people can be good and bad okay okay all right Uh, moving on to the next question okay so not next question next word let's see the next word okay a person who actively opposes uh, or is hostile so understood the meaning of antagonist you know the meaning of activist you know the meaning of terrorist what is the meaning of incendiary what is the meaning of incendiary is the meaning a person uh, a person who maliciously destroys by fire okay incendiary is also uh, we use it for bomb okay so an incendiary bomb okay what is the meaning of incendiary bomb a bomb that explodes okay It causes a lot of fire okay so incendiary bomb or device it can also be device okay so basically it means uh, designed to cause fire something something that is designed to cause fire or is combustible okay so that is an incendiary and a person who uh destroys by using fire is also called an incendiary sheetal mai ibps po class bhi leti hu that happens uh, every friday शीतल मुझे लगता है आप यहाँ नहीं हो तो आपको नहीं पता होगा लेकिन हर फ्राइडे हमारा आई बी पी एस पी ओ का डिस्कशन होता है तो मैं ही लेती हूँ और कोई और नहीं लेता है ओके कांग्रेस इज शुभम आई एम गोइंग टू ओके द कांग्रेस इज एन एंटेगनिस्ट ऑफ द बीजेपी absolutely not i do not agree with that statement too i don't know how many of you are followers of bjp i am not a big fan of politics but when it comes to bjp uh... okay satish yes i will be speaking in english as well but just for my students who are not very comfortable in speaking in english yet for them a little bit of help would be good okay so satish uh this if you know that people from all over um, they come here so uh, that's why okay okay now please no talks about which is better uh, congress or bjp and no antagonists i do not want to hear your comparisons shubham uh, those are outrageous comparisons okay let's okay let's move on to the next question a person who forsakes religion okay someone like me someone who forsakes religion what is the meaning of forsakes religion leaves religion okay so what is the meaning of charlatan it is pronounced as charlatan okay charlatan and the meaning is a person a person who okay now they are all together outside the act uh, it's just an example for for six okay okay those who i this the hindi part was only for the people who asked or commented in hindi i was just explaining sheetal i do take classes on fridays 
and that's about it shankara rao i'm not saying that i'm supporting hindi or i will be speaking only in hindi guys don't be so offended come on okay coming back to the question okay a person falsely claiming to have a special knowledge or skill all right so someone who is uh the word for it is um uh, the synonyms could be quack we also call them quack or fake of someone who is uh, not legitimate okay someone who uses a lot of uh, dis, uh, deceiving and fabrication to talk about their skills okay so the word for it is charlatan okay next there's a spelling mistake over here it should there's no such word it should be a postal okay and what is the meaning of a postal a a vigorous and pioneering advocate so basically an advocate okay or it can also be a supporter so this is not the word again okay of a particular policy or something like that apostle on the other hand renegade renegade means a deserter from one's faith cause or allegation uh, alliances or alliances to another okay so that is the meaning of the word renegade i think it is a plus positive word Okay, the meaning of forsaken is left. Okay, the meaning of forsaken is to leave something. Okay, mm, why have you forsaken your children? That means why have you left your children? Okay, deserted your children. Okay, that is the meaning of forsaken. Okay, apostle. I said it is not a pol. Uh, it this there's a spelling mistake cost of like i said it it should be a p o s t l e okay and the meaning of it is an advocate okay or a pioneering advocate or a very aggressive advocate uh, abandoned yes anil you are right forsake means abandoned okay and renegade like i said should be the word for it now let's look at the last word apotheosis okay what is the meaning of apotheosis so this is the answer okay and the meaning of the last word the is the highest basically the peak of something or the highest point of something highest point in the development or something okay so uh, synonyms can be uh peak it can be climax it can be culmination all these words are the synonyms of apotheosis okay apotheosis okay so these are the words and the person who forsakes religion someone who's like me and forsakes relig religion or an atheist who uh, is again the same thing a uh, renegade okay so that is the meaning of the word renegade all right moving on to the next word okay now we have to talk about we are moving on to the next category where uh, you have to spot 
which one is correctly spelled okay so till here i think i have explained everything uh, well if you have any questions how many questions were done oh shrikant you are very early for the class a lot of questions have been done apex yes shubham you are right okay so now let's look at which words are the same word is given in four different ways you have to find out to spot out which one is correctly spelt okay let's let's go for it okay so is heterogeneous this is the word heterogeneous what is the meaning of heterogeneous consisting of different kinds okay homogeneous hetero means different and genius is the uh, it can be kind or people or things anything okay so hetero hetero means uh, that okay so and the spelling is h e t e r o so this is how you have to you have to cut it short and you have to see you have to divide it into half hetero is wrong over here so option 1 is not the answer again wrong not the answer till here it is fine okay so let's talk about the next half genius okay genius we are not uh, g e n e o u s is the right one so option 4 is the right answer over here moving on to the next word variegated okay variegated variegated okay it is pronounced as v a r i a g a t e d but it is not written in the same way it there is it is v a r i e very okay variegated okay but it is pronounced as variegated it is pronounced as this but uh, actually the right spelling is option 1 variegated okay and it what does it mean it consists uh, meaning having different types of colors okay different types of color color okay so that is the meaning so one is the right answer one not three how many of you are saying three why oh my god there is an e i e g a t e d okay not so it's not variegated it is variegated variegated okay moving on to the next word acquiescence okay what is the meaning of acquiescence the meaning of the word acquiescence is acceptance okay permit accept okay so without making uh any without revolting okay that is the meaning of acquiescence and acqui acqui essence is the word acqui and essence and this is the right answer acqui and essence so it should essence is spelled this way acqui is spelled this way so this is the right answer so first one is the right answer again it is a noun which means acceptance okay moving on to the next one okay so that is it from this category now we will be solving one of my least favorite categories we will be doing that is not accept it is accept we are talking about ac accepting not accepting what is accepting i don't think we use accept uh, in, in the ing form a lot okay it is accept to permit to agree okay without revolting so we will be solving pair jumbles now let's look at the pairs uh, let's look at the pair jumbles guys are you going through it or are you busy typing something homophones accept and accept are not homophones they are not even homographs they they do not sound the same there is a difference okay so, uh, accept is accept and accept so a and e there are two different sounds all right quickly go through the parajumble and parajumble is paragraphs that are jumbled up that is parajumble or jumble sentences also we say it in the long term
Okay, Durba, that's what I'm here for. So just go through it and see if you can solve it or not. And then I will be able to help you out. Do not look at the comment section. First try solving it on your own. And if you are facing problem, then I'm here to help. Okay, so let's just quickly go through it. Making people laugh is tricky, okay? So the, the, this is the heading itself. So you know what it is going to start with, okay? So making people laugh is tricky. That is the heading. And where do you see it again? So let's look at the option first. One of the options is starting with C, another is starting with A, next is starting with B, and the other is starting with D. So you know what you have to do in this case. You have to play smart. You just have to understand which one will be the introductory statement and that is it you do not have to work your way through entire parajambles okay so if you just know which one will be the starting statement you don't have to work your way through the other options okay so you do not have to know the entire story just the introductory statement so let's see which one will be the introductory statement at times the intended humor may simply not come off okay intended humor may simply not come off uh, again not something that can be the starting statement there are cannot be the starting statement again cannot be the starting statement there are indicators that in substituting the hard sell for a more entertaining approach some agencies have rather okay thrown out the baby with the bath water okay what does this idiom means thrown out the baby with the bath water okay we'll uh, get to that okay sixth one is okay so now people might have confusion between a, a can be the starting statement b can be the starting statement okay d this is the final statement so we do not have to even so the confusion is only between a and b now making people laugh while trying you can see that it is given in the heading itself making people laugh is tricky making people laugh again so this is the introductory statement so it will be option three that is b a d c okay and the meaning of uh if someone does not know what is the meaning of cash tills cash tills are those cash cash registers you will you might have seen in the supermarkets they use this machine and they uh, uh you hear the they put collect cash so these cash cash registers in british english they are called cash tills okay they call them cash tills okay now throw out the baby with the bath water is an unavoidable error sorry an avoidable error not an unavoidable error so something that you could have avoided in which something good is eliminated trying to when trying to get rid of something bad okay so when you are trying to get rid of something good sorry i'm so sorry so when you're trying to get rid of something bad and in that process you get rid of something good as well along with it that is throwing the baby with the bath water okay so Again, this has a history to it. Uh, it is an idiom, so it, there must be a story uh, to it. Find out the story, okay? Uh, so we have got the answer for the first para jumbles. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, but them is not referred earlier. Okay, Sony, uh, look at the statement. P making people, okay, so making people laugh. Okay, so people 
again them is used for people okay so them is not the initial state initial word okay so that's why them is used uh, making people laugh while trying to sell them them who we are talking about the people again okay that's why them is used in statement b okay did you get it okay Uh, yes, fall flat on two grounds as in uh, fail in both the cases, okay, is the meaning of fall flat on two grounds. Okay, moving on to the next one. Go through it quickly and tell me the answers. Durba, I want you to answer first. Guys, please do not answer unless Durba answers. Okay, please wait till Durba answers. Durba, are you able to hear me? Please make sure that you answer first. No one else will write their answers in this one. First you answer, go through the passage and then the others will follow, okay? So others, even if you know or you do not know, do not answer. Alright, we will just go through it till then. So the starting statement is the initial statement is according to recent research the critical period for developing languages skills is between the age of three and five and a half years okay so we are talking about language skill developing language skills okay so durba says it's three okay now let's look at uh, the options okay shrikant says it's four Okay, since we have two options that are starting with A, so let's look at if A can be the starting statement or the next statement that follows the first statement or not, okay? The read to child already has a large vocabulary and a sense of grammar and sentence structure. Okay, that is first one. Uh, let's look at what... Divya has to say, children who are read to in these years, in these years, in these years, a critical period for developing languages between, okay, three and a half years, okay, have a far better chance of reading well in school indeed, of doing well in all their subjects, okay, children who are read to in these years have a far better chance of reading well in school indeed of doing instead of uh, indeed of doing uh, well in all the there's something missing over here and the reason is actually quite simple this correlation is far and wide the highest yet found between okay we are d is talking about this correlation which correlation are we talking about we are talking about correlation between uh, doing reading well and doing well in their subjects okay this correlation so b and d have to come along right because they are mandatory pair and then comes and this and the reason is the correlation is in a, is it found in school and the reason is actually quite simple and the simple reason is uh, the read to child is already has a large vocabulary and the sense of structure yes so fourth one is the right answer Okay. Okay, Divya, uh, sorry. Um, Durba, do not get upset. Again, we'll have more opportunities. Just keep going through it, okay? We'll keep looking at it and we'll definitely come up with... Uh, you do not understand this passage. Why, uh, Sony? The passage is very clear. It talks about how uh, children who are read to, as in who can read better and uh, can grasp things early uh, between the age of three and five and a half if they are able to read they are better in their 
uh, school and they perform well in their academics and so on and so forth okay okay moving on to the next question okay so now we have uh, we have done with para jumbles uh, Durba, please try practicing as many parajambas as possible. Moving on to the next type, now we have to fill in the blanks. Okay, so let's see what do we have over here. Okay, so the best punctuation is that of which the reader is least conscious. For when punctuation or lack of it dash itself, it is usually because it dash. Okay. So the best punctuation, we're talking about punctuation marks and uh, how are the readers least conscious of it, uh, but how important it is, okay? Okay, so the sentence mentions the punctuation or lack of it, okay? Okay, so from here, okay, what is the meaning of obtrudes? Obtrudes mean, means become noticeable. Okay, become noticeable. Okay, uh, that is the meaning of, what is the meaning of enjoins? Enjoins mean not to join. It means instruct. or urge to do something okay and what is the meaning of conceal conceal i'm sure all of you understand what is the meaning of conceal hide or not allowed to be seen A recede means go or move back. What is the meaning of a face? Okay, so you guys are saying it is two, and why is that? The best punctuation mark is that of which the reader is least conscious. Okay, so we are talking about some uh, those punctuation which are least, which the readers are least conscious about. But if they are not, uh, if there is a lack of it, okay, then it becomes noticeable. Okay, when there is a lack of these punctuation, then it becomes obtrudes itself. It obtrudes when or lack of it obtrude itself it is usually because it offends okay so i'm not sure how many of you understand the meaning of the first uh, of the statement okay so it talks about uh, the beauty of punctuation is that uh, most of the readers are not aware of punctuation marks so but when they are not there if there is a lack of punctuation mark it offends people it becomes very obvious and it becomes very obvious and it offends people it changes the meaning of the statement and so on and so forth okay so that is the meaning of the uh, statement and this is why it will be option one okay moving on to the next question If you are an introvert, you dash to prefer working alone and if possible, will dash towards, okay, towards, uh, remember the prepositions, okay, towards projects where you can work by yourself or with a few people, okay, okay. So what do you, you incline towards something, okay, or you are attracted towards something. attracted towards something or gravitate towards something okay so these are the words with which we use towards 
okay so attract towards let's see option gravitate to and for okay if you are an introvert you dash you express to prefer working alone no so you tend to and again tend tend to is another phrasal verb which means are more inclined to okay tend to work towards uh, uh, tend to prefer working alone and if possible will gravitate towards projects where you can work by yourself or with a few people Yes, Sony, that is a very nice example of using the punctuation, right? When it becomes, uh, where you use the punctuation, it changes the entire meaning of the statement, okay? Like and prefer a same meaning, eliminate one. Okay. All right, moving on to the next question. Unless new reserves are found soon, the world supply of coal is being dashed in such a way that with demand continuing to grow at present rates, reserves will be dashed by the year 2050. Okay. So unless new reserves are found soon, the world supply of coal is being what? Is it being, uh, what is being, what is happening to the reserve of coal? Is it being consumed? No, we do not consume coal. Is it reduced? Being reduced? Okay. Uh, we can keep two. Okay. Depleted. Yes, it can be depleted as well. So we'll keep uh, three as well. Burnt. Burnt means without any uh, fruitful results. Okay. So that four is also not the right answer. Okay. So we have op option between two and three. Okay. So, unless new reserves is being reduced in such a way or is being depleted in such a way that demand continuing to grow at present rates, reserves will be exhausted. Okay, reserves will be exhausted. So, op so option 3 is the right answer. Okay, we are talking about uh, demand growing demand so coal is being depleted and reserves are being exhausted is the apt answer so three is the right answer moving on to the next question not all countries benefit dash from liberalization the benefits tend to dash first uh, to the advantaged and to those with the right education to be able to benefit from the opportunities presented okay so it what the statement says that liberalization i hope all of you understand the meaning of uh, liberalization uh, liberalization is loosening or um, being lenient with certain rules and regulations and not restricting people in the most economic and political terms okay a uh, lot of leniency is given okay so what it says not all can countries uh, dash from liberalization. The benefits tend to dash first to the advantage and to those with the right education to be able to benefit from the opportunities presented. Okay, so this liberalization does not benefit everyone. It just benefits to the top creamy layer of the population. Okay, so, uh, that's what it means. Uh, Okay, what is the meaning of, okay, generate those. Most of you are saying uh, one, but I know the answer also is given one, but the answer according to me is not one, okay? Because uh, look at the second option. If we put not all countries benefit uniformly, it, this one is correct from liberalization, the benefit tend to generate first to the advantage how are benefits generated 
I think it should be equally uh, from liberal benefit equally from liberalization. The benefits tend to percolate. What is the meaning of percolate? It means something. It's like a filter. Okay, so first the benefit filters to the top uh, layer of the population, and it slowly grows and spreads gradually. Okay, so. Having the same status or only equal and something like that, okay. And what is uh, ascribe? Ascribe means a cause, okay. A cause of something, okay. So according to me, fourth one is the right answer, okay. Not you cannot generate benefits tend to generate benefits i don't know how do you generate benefits so according to me it will be the fourth is the right answer okay yes sure all right moving on to the next one our dash to understand the process of learning underlying behavior change is dashed by the fact that any given behavior is determined jointly by many processes okay now what is this our uh, nature to understand the process of learning underlying behavior change or our implication or will it be okay so the statement is talking about our dash to understand the process of learning underlying behavior change is so the purpose is or our attempt is our nature it cannot be our nature to uh, our implication again not our scope cannot be attempt attempt to understand the process of uh, learning underlying behavior changes change is complicated by the fact that any given behavior is determined jointly by many processes okay so uh, our, uh, if we attempt to understand uh, behavior change it the attempt is not fruitful because there's a lot of complicated many processes involved in understanding behavior of a person okay so that is why it will be option four all right option four attempt yes moving on to the next one okay now error spotting we have uh, please play uh, please pay close attention because we are going to do some error spotting okay uh, despite of okay here itself I have always told you it is in spite of and despite despite is never accompanied with despite of okay so one has the error so the error is in option one all right only despite moving on to the next question the decoration in your house are similar to his house okay here we are talking about decoration decoration is similar to his house how is decoration equal to house so that is uh, in your house are similar to that of his house okay so option three has the error option three decorations please remember this decoration so r is absolutely fine there is no error over there shubham uh no yeah shubham and shrikant there is no error over there the error is to his all right moving on to the next one he was in the temper and refused to discuss the matter again okay so he was in uh, we usually say the idiom is in a temper okay and what is the meaning of in a temper it means someone who is unreasonably angry
All right. He told the boys that if they worked hard, they will surely pass. If they worked hard, they would surely pass. If conditions, I have discussed if conditions and if you have not paid attention, please go back and pay attention to it once again. Okay. Moving on to the next one. The error is in three in this statement. And since it is used in the past, uh, if condition is used in the past form, that's why it will be would surely pass. Okay. Yes, three has the error. Moving on to the next question. I think this is clear. If it is not clear, I think uh, next class I will take the if conditions because I'm sure a lot of you are facing a lot of doubts in if conditions. All right, moving on to the next question. I shall write to you when I shall reach Chennai. Okay, what is the error over here? You cannot, you, you do not have to use shall and shall twice. I shall write to you when I reach Chennai. Okay, so two, you don't have to use shall twice. So three has error. So option three is the error. Done. All right, so this brings us to the end of our session today. SSC, CGL, we have discussed the paper. We will be back next Friday and please make sure if you have doubts, you post it on the dashboard, okay? Uh, Alright, so I had a wonderful time explaining you the sessions and that's it from my side. I feel like I'm reading news and this is the end of the bulletin. Uh, uh, anyways, so this brings us to the end of today's session. Uh, goodbye, have a, have a very happy weekend. I will see you guys next Friday. Till then, bye bye. When I reach Chennai, is correct. Yes, Divya. All right. Okay, uh, Satish, all the best for your uh, IBPS RRB exam. I hope you do well and I really hope so. Okay, please let me know. Do let me know what happens in the next session that we, you come for. Okay, and this was, I don't know why Sony is saying this was short. I think it was not short at all. Anyways, um, I think Sony is a pedant. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I feel so. Anyways, let's finish it off, guys. Last time I'm saying goodbye, goodbye, everyone. Bye, bye, bye.